with this new modeling, with the dynamic nature of the models that we've been using for now many, many weeks, uh, it seems, I think, uh, self-evident uh, that we should not prepare to bring our children back into the school setting. And that's why I was very pleased yesterday. We've been working collaboratively with the Superintendent of Public Education, Tony Thurman, and Lyndon Darling Hammond. Uh, I'm very pleased with the guidance the superintendent put out. Uh, I've been very honest with all of you for weeks now, my belief and my expectation. But I think based on that modeling, it should be clear uh, that the right thing to do uh, for our children, the right thing to do for the parents, uh, for households, for the communities in which they reside, uh, is to make sure that we are preparing today uh, to set our school system up where we are increasing class time, but increasing it at home and fulfilling our obligations through distance learning uh, and other mechanisms to make sure that we're educating our kids but not doing so physically on the school sites. Uh, and so I'm very pleased that we have the Superintendent of Public Education uh, here on the phone. And in a moment, uh, I'll turn it over to him. Uh, but with the expectation now that the school, schools will not reopen, but classes are in, uh, we also recognize our responsibility uh, to make sure uh, that we're not only educating our kids, but we're feeding our kids. And before I turn it over, I just want to make two quick announcements along those lines. Uh, we were very pleased to get a waiver from the federal government that will allow us to substantially increase access uh, to food distribution uh, throughout our public education system in the state. We've made great progress, but it's been inhibited uh, by the lack of uh, access to this waiver. We finally got that waiver and that will allow us to more substantially provide points of access for grab and go meals and other meals uh, throughout our system. Number two, I was very pleased today with the great work of Tony Thurman, Ben Cheetah in my office and others, we were able to advance a management labor agreement. Uh, this was a stubborn issue that manifested itself very differently in the 1,000-plus school districts throughout the state of California. Remember, this is the largest school system in the United States of America. Uh, we worked with management of all stripes and labor of all stripes to get a comprehensive agreement on protocols and procedures and processes to work through any differences that we may have in preparation and expectation to meet this moment and do the kind of work that's necessary uh, to advance our distance learning and to make sure that people are appropriately getting the resources and access to critical curricula related to homeschooling. In order to do that, we needed some private sector support. So today I'm also pleased to announce Google stepped up Google stepped up in a big way. Uh, Google announced today, or we're announcing today, uh, with Google, a partnership where they are providing 100,000 points of access to improve Wi-Fi and broadband capacity. And not only access to in the internet, but quality access to the internet. They're providing minimum three months free access uh, to high quality. Uh, uh, well, to high quality access to broadband uh, throughout the state of California. Those 100,000 points will help us substantially address the digital divide issues, the rural issues, the equity issues that are at play, um, even in the best of times, but substantively are highlighted in these more difficult times. In addition to that, Google has announced thousands of Chromebooks that they'll also be making available for those that may say, well, that's wonderful. I have access to the internet now, but I don't have anything to connect. Uh, and so they will be providing uh, those uh, Chromebooks in addition to providing minimum three months unlimited uh, capacity at 100 plus thousand sites throughout the state of California. Uh, we need more Googles. Uh, we still have a little bit more coverage that we're going to need in some of the more remote parts of the state, but this was a substantial enhancement uh, that came just at the right time with the labor management agreement, with the federal waiver, uh, and with now uh, the expectation that schools will close. I just want to end by making one personal point, and that is as a parent of four, the oldest being 10, uh, this has been a very stressful time. And so for all the parents out there, millions of you, uh, that now may be very 
anxious about the expectation your school is not going to reopen. You may have thought that was the case, but you were waiting to hear clarity, which I hope we're providing now today. Uh, let me just express deep respect and empathy, and particularly for mothers. And let me just say this openly. Um, I try to do my part uh, as a parent, uh, but my wife does an heroic amount of work, and the pressure uh, that we have placed now, additional pressure on caregivers and parents, particularly women and moms, is extraordinary. Moms are already carrying a disproportionate amount of weight in terms of managing the household. Moms are also working, and many of them are teachers themselves that are having to provide distance learning, having to cope with all the stress and anxiety, looking out for all of their kids they love dearly and making sure they're taking care of their own kids and their childcare needs and the like. Uh, and again, there's a gender reality connected to this. And I just want to go deeply to express uh, an appreciation to all of the moms, all of those teachers, all of those caregivers. I know how stressful this is. Trust me, I know. And I know what we're asking of you over the course of the next few months. And I know you are looking forward to those graduations. You were looking forward to seeing, you know, how well you did with the SAT and those grades and, and competitive environment, particularly for our seniors. And, and, and all of those things were working in real time. And that's why I'm going to turn it over to the superintendent and Linda darling to talk about partnerships with the UCs, California State University system, uh, and our community college system uh, to address A through G requirements and address uh, the issues associated with the SATs and graduation. Uh, but we know. Uh, that those anxieties run deep and they are justifiable. Uh, and so the care uh, and the deep uh, empathy and collaboration you provide uh, at this moment um, will never be forgotten. And I just want to know how deeply proud I am of everybody uh, that is going to step in to the void with these schools being, cl schools being closed, but these classes now continuing uh, so that we can educate our kids despite uh, this challenging moment. And so with that, uh, if I could ask uh, Tony Thurman, who's kind enough to join us uh, by phone, uh, to amplify some of this. And I just want to thank the superintendent for his wonderful leadership and really helping navigate a system uh, that is the most challenging education system in terms of jurisdictional uh, uh, diversity of any in the United States of America. Tony? Uh, thank you, Governor. I'm just happy to uh, echo the sentiments that the governor and uh, his team have provided about how unprecedented these times are. And, and given the height of the challenge, how important it is for us to put forward maximum um, social distancing so that we can flatten the curve. And for those reasons, it is so important that our schools continue to do what they are doing, that our schools are using Distance learning, what I mean by distance learning is simply that the teacher and the student are in different places so that our students can continue to get education but done in a way that is safe. And uh, we've been in communication uh, with superintendents around the state urging all of our superintendents in our schools to uh, proceed as if um, we can only educate our kids through distance learning for the remainder of the school year. Quite frankly, none of us knows uh, when it's safe enough for our students to return to campus, we have to do the work that we heard Secretary Ghali talk about today um, to, to uh, you know, promote social distancing and flatten the curve. But out of an abundance of caution, uh, we believe it is most important that all of our schools uh, maximize their efforts around distance learning to help all of our students. Uh, we know that this is difficult. We know that this is a challenge. But as it relates to the education of our kids, we have to rise to that challenge. And so while right now our campuses are closed to our kids, school is not out for the year. In fact, we are asking everyone to accelerate their efforts to make sure that our students get a great education. As the governor indicated, we're working with a number of philanthropic leaders to make sure that we can provide devices and access to Wi-Fi for many of our students who don't have them. We're providing professional learning and training for our teachers and other educators uh, on how do we do distance learning. Uh, tomorrow will be at 3 p.m. There will be, for anyone who's interested, there will be a webinar with a number of experts and teachers who are also experts on how we can deliver special education 
through distance learning. We have literally surveyed just about every school district in the state to ask what your technology needs are. The California Department of Education is providing training. We're working collaboratively with our higher education institutions, many of whom have already announced that they will accept work in a pass, not pass format so that our seniors will not be, uh, it won't be held against them that they're not able to take the SAT, that the SAT will no longer uh, be uh, used as criteria for admissions as was just announced today um, by the UC. We're working with our higher education uh, community to make sure that while we can't provide a graduation ceremony for our students, we can ensure that they graduate and that they move forward uh, on post-secondary educational opportunities. And so I want to thank the governor and his team. I want to thank the governor for his leadership. I want to encourage everyone to continue uh, social distancing. Uh, the California Education will continue to provide support to any district that needs it uh, as it relates to distance learning. Um, this is a, a tough challenge, but as it relates to educating our kids, it's a challenge that we must meet. Uh, we can do more together. We're stronger together. And together, we will support the educational needs of our 6 million students. And if there are questions, we're happy to hear them at uh, CDE uh, at COVID19.cde.ca.gov, and we'll stay in this conversation. Thank you, Governor.